Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is episode 9 of Wind's Russia campaign in Civilization 5. Sid Meier's Civilization 5. Um, I wonder if there are, there can't be any other Civilization 5s that are like by other people. Like you don't have like, say, Joe Willikers as Sid Meier's 5 or anything. Just Sid Meier's Civilization 5. Maybe, maybe he's just proud of his name that he decides to just add his name in. Anyway, I do kind of have a plan for, well, somewhere along the near future for um, this, like, what to do inside this game. What I want to do is, I want to find other people, so I want to get astronomy as soon as possible. <laughs> and in order to get astronomy, we need the compass and education. I'm currently working on civil service, civil service, not civil service. Um, once we've done that in 8 turns, we can then begin on education, which will take 16 turns. That'll be, what, 24 turns? Then after that, we can start working on astronomy. By this time, we'll also be um, trying to build some of the unique buildings, in fact. Is the Oxford University a national wonder? I seem to recall me building it before in multiplayer games and it not popping up in, like, on, like, the side where... Like over here, it says, say, the Colossus has been built in faraway land. I didn't see it there, and I asked other people, and they didn't say they saw it, so I guess it's a national wonder. But it just doesn't seem like that because we have a national college. So, like, is the Oxford University a national university? There's only one Oxford University in the world, or unless there's a place in America called Oxford and there's a university there. Um, well, you, there might be, in fact. But anyway, I am getting rather off topic. Once we research education, we can start building um, universities, Oxford University, and research agreements. That won't help us just yet. Once we've done that, we'll research the compass, which will allow us to build a new type of ship. Can't sail over the ocean. Will also allow us to get a harbour, which is kind of... Oh. Forms a city connection with the capital over water, but my capital is not coastal. Does that matter? It's next to a river. I'll test that out, in fact. I'll test to see um, if I can create a city connection between my capital and, say, a city that I build, say, like, say, on another island somewhere. Man, I can't believe I'm, like, in the middle of nowhere. How big is this map? Large. Oh. Okay. That kind of changes a few things. <laughs> so it's going to take, like, a really long time to find other people. Which is hugely unfortunate, because um, I want to actually meet other people. Part of this whole game is meeting other people. But I th reckon once we've got astronomy, we should start developing our military technology. If we can get to physics, then we'll be able to... Then I'll declare on Sidon once we have a trebuchet. Anyway though, we should establish a trade route again. We can trade with St. Petersburg, and that'll help to provide... Some more food. Let me check the food growth. Plus 2.2. Don't avoid growth. Okay, plus 16.5. That's much better. Uh, wasn't there something I wanted them to, like, focus on? Sorry, like a tile? Oh yeah, it was this silver tile. Why? Why did I tell them to focus on this one? Oh, because it provides one culture? Really, is that it? Why didn't I tell them to lock onto this one? Maybe because this one has food? I suppose. Um, man, what was I talking about? I got confused. Alright, I was looking at... So 16 turns until... Sorry, plus 16 food. And St. Petersburg has plus 9 food. Okay. So Moscow will definitely grow, so... Either I can start getting some more money in... Which will give me plus five, or I can send more food. No, let's actually go for money. Right now we are kind of losing some money, in fact. Um, unit needs orders. Okay. You guys, what are you guys doing? You guys are still cutting down forests. So just continue doing that, if you please. These guys are finished with the barbarian encampment. And we should be quite friendly with Wellington. We are. Excellent. And you scout can just go out and scout the surrounding coast. And let's just click next turn. Did this place up here end in a dead end? Yeah, unfortunately it did. Hmm. 
Well, you never know. There's always the chance that, like, there are coast tiles that connect more than, like, there might be, like, one trail of coast tiles all the way over here to, like, through the middle of the ocean for no apparent reason. I don't know. I'm getting desperate. I really want to find another civilization. I want to know what I'm up against. I want to know, like, what civilizations there are out there on this world, which ones exist. But anyway, we're just going to move our trireme out of the way. Oh no. <laughs> we're trapped on this island. We need to make a grand empire from this one island. Oh man, okay. So it looks like Russia in this campaign is going to be a seafaring um, folk, I guess. Um, a stable. Why do you want me to produce a stable? 15% production when building mounted units? Dude, we don't have horses. There are no horses on this island. Well, okay, there's some over there right next to the barbarian encampment on the um, barbarian wing. Um, each source is of sheep as well. We don't have sheep. And cattle. We do have cattle, in fact. There's actually one cattle tile literally like right there. But is that really worth the one production? Hmm. Alternatively, I could go for... You know what, let's just focus on religious stuff for now. Now, I think I've made um, my point, saying that I myself aren't very... Um, is not very religious. While I do not like, say, um, practice any religious... Um, practices, I suppose they're called. Um, I do still find the whole idea of, like, religion quite fascinating. I mean, there's so many, like, religions out there, like, one of them's got to, well, <laughs> I was about to say one of them's got to have some truth to it, but that's actually incorrect. They all have truth to it, but it's like, there has to be some, like, thing to it. I'm not, oh man, I'm not really articulating myself very well. I'm not questioning their um, legitimacy, but there has to be like some, in order for so many people to believe it, there has to be like some like <laughs> evidence or something. But anyway, um, I don't want to stir a religious argument, that's actually the last thing I want to do, but let's just continue on. We have our own religion called Winism. <laughs> In the game, obviously. Anyway, we are still making quite a lot of money. Probably because we're not actually spending it on anything. That's why we have so much money. But what can we spend our money on? Um. Hmm. That's an interesting point. We could try and raise friendships with some of these people. If we... Um. Improve relations with Ify. They will reward the player that destroyed a nearby encampment. Oh, that one. Um, you know, yeah, I can actually send some of my troops up to there. I'll send these troops out to try and get a hold of it. And I'll also do the same with these troops. Um, you guys can't embark? Oh, you need to be in friendly territory, right? I think. Is that how it goes? Really? Why can't I tell you guys to embark? Those guys managed to embark right there, I guess. Maybe I need to be closer? I don't understand the whole where you can and can't embark thing. I know in the game, or in the technology which allows embarkation, um, it says that you can only embark in friendly territory. And I assume friendly territory is like inside your influence, as I want to call it, like, your borders. I call it influence because there's this really great game that came out a long time ago called Black and White. It's by Lionhead Studios, by um, a dude called Peter Molyneux, the people who made Fable, in fact, and all of that stuff. And I reckon that Black and White is such an amazing game. It's like, if you haven't ever played it, go and play it. The graphics are, well, 3D graphics, but they're horrendous, considering, well, they're horrendous now compared to other games. At the time, they were quite good, and I, the game is still very much playable. There are, like, low-polygon, like, characters about... 
I'd recommend it. It's a god simulator and it's like extraordinarily fun. Play it if you haven't. <coughs> oh wow. Um, play it if you haven't. Or if not, try and look for it on YouTube or something. See if somebody's playing it. I would record it, but I... I don't actually have it installed and it's um, quite old. So it like has problems with my computer. <laughs> But yeah, definitely check it out if you can. I still want to know how many, like, um, well I know how many civilizations there are, but I really want to know what type of civilizations we're up against. It looks like there is next to no way off of this island without astronomy. And even then it's going to take so long in order to finish, like get to somewhere should I say. It's just going to be ridiculous. <laughs> but hopefully Ify doesn't mind me sending my troops through their borders. Um, let's take a look. We can build the Hagia Sophia, which gives us a free great profit. And also gives us a free temple. Now the temple gives us two faith, but it also costs us two in maintenance. Eventually, oh man. I just realized the more buildings we have, the more money that we're going to spend on maintenance. But we have so limited trade routes. Which is also why the um, astronomy thing is going to be so much Im more important than anything else we discover. Simply for access to um, different trading routes. Still can't believe this place here ends in a dead end. I still can't believe we're on like the southernmost island. I mean, we're literally connected to the South Pole. To Antarctica, if you will, on here on Bird Lady Island. I couldn't find the image that I was mentioning um, a video or so ago about that bird symbol. I I want to say it's the Zoroastrian symbol, but actually, let me check. Can I check religious overview? Uh, religious overview. Oh man, Zoroastrianism hasn't been founded yet. Uh. No. Man, I wish I could, like, take a look at the symbol, see if it's the symbol that I'm talking about. But it basically has lines coming out like this, and then it, like, um, there's a horizontal, no, vertical line extending downwards to simulate the wings. This one just has its left arm, like, cut off. But anyway, we might want to build a crepost, which um, reduces the cost of acquiring new tiles, which means we can expand much more fervently. And if we do that, we'll get access to these luxury resources. We won't be able to work on the tiles, like we can't go into the city and have one of these green faces over there. But we can still connect the luxury resource up to us. Hmm. We can either go for Bordo Bordo, or we go to Hagia Sophia. Bordo Bordo gives us three free missionaries and plus five faith. While the Hagia Sophia gives us plus three faith and a free great profit. And a free great temple. Sorry, a free temple. Hmm. What does the garden do? Oh, we might want a garden, actually. Although, if we go for the garden, somebody might be building the Hagia Sophia already. You know what, let's, let's queue up. Let's go Hagia Sophia, then we'll go the garden. And that should be good for now. Let's change to... Production focus. Well, there's only two turns until new citizen form. Right, we'll wait until Moscow grows one more, and then we shall um, change to production focus. You guys can just start um, taking down that forest. Oh man, I'm still so like. <laughs> I won't say I'm annoyed, but I'm like kind of upset at that we are so isolated. I mean, we have three city-states around us. That's okay, I suppose. I just realized those barbarian hand axes up here might be able to attack my trireme. I don't expect it to actually destroy my trireme or do too much damage, but still, it's going to be an annoyance. And we have to sail all the way to St. Petersburg in order to um, get the thing. Oh, because we're no longer... Right, I know what I'm doing. Give gift, 25 gold, there we go. Now it's one turn, okay. The reason why I did that is because 
Wellington is maritime, and that gives us extra food. And in order to improve our progress on um, the Hagia Sophia, I said I wanted to wait until we gained... Um, until we gained something. Until we gained, like, enough population. Let's just see what's over here. Oh, there's an island over here. Well, there's land over here. It's sheep. Okay, that sound is our Russian um, scouts just disembarking. And we're going to be sending our Russian warriors up as well. We are sending our archers up to this encampment up here as well. The reason why I want to do that is because I want to get friendly with Ify. Why do I want to do that? Well, because they are um, religious and they'll provide us with extra faith. The only thing that saves us from the bureaucracy is its inefficiency. True that, Eugene McCarthy. Although, I don't know anything about the bureaucracy. But this does allow us to... Let, it allows us to push the Landskind only when we get a certain po um, social policy within the commerce uh, thing. We also can get the Chichen Itza, which increases the length of Golden Ages by 50%. It also, kind of more importantly, gives us extra happiness, culture, and great engineer points. To be honest, Great Ages are, sorry, Golden Ages are nice. They're a nice benefit, but unless you're playing as someone like, say, Persia or Brazil, the Chichen Itza isn't really, I wouldn't say necessary, or like a huge strategic part of the game, unless I'm just being completely oblivious to like a certain way of playing. We also get increased farm, um, food from farm that are one tiles on tiles with access to fresh water. Now that includes um, rivers, it doesn't include ocean, mind you, obviously the ocean is salt water. And also food from terrace farms increased by one. Now what are terrace farms? If I'm not mistaken that's a... Uh, I want to say Inca. Is it the Inca? The Mayans? Probably the Inca. Let's see, terrace farms. Civilization. The Inca, yes. Um, developed mountainous areas simultaneously around the world. Bali, Philippines, China, Peru. Steep fields cut into hills and mountainsides, preventing the runoff of irrigation water. Okay. Can be built on the hill. Right, okay. So we don't need to worry about that, because we're not the Inca, therefore we can't build that thing. Can we disembark yet? No. Really? Oh my lord. <laughs> okay. Let's... You know what? If we can't disembark here, let's go up to here and focus our efforts there. I'm going to send my dudes to stand on this tile to hopefully gain some vision over here. And this trade caravan is done. Let's go and trade with... We can trade with Wellington or we can trade with Moscow. Let's trade with Wellington. Yeah. And now, you guys, I want you guys to focus on production next. And you guys just go and see whatever it is that you can see. Sure. Turn end. Turn end off. Okay. Sorry, I apologize if that was um, offensive to some people. I didn't mean to offend people, I just meant to, well, say that in a Japanese accent, really. Now we're just waiting for the turns to finish. Still planning on attacking Sudan eventually. They have quite a lot of food production over here. They have two wheat tiles. They have a whole bunch of other stuff. Do you have enough vision to see anything over here? No. Probably going to have to train you on some barbarians a bit more. Unless you're already two levels ahead. I guess the St. Petersburg have finished building the temple, which is great for me. Because now we are gaining plus 12 faith. Let's see, how long until we get another great prophet? Doesn't tell me. Um, let's go purchase. Great profit? No, hold on. Probably need to be in a holy city. Add to queue, purchase, missionary? No. Where do I see how long it'll take me until I get my next great profit? Oh, 300 faith minimum for next chance of the great profit. Okay, I see. So what should we build in St. Petersburg? That's an interesting question. Now we don't really have much need for a work boat yet. We don't have any need for a cargo ship just yet. 
Um, there's nothing really to build, I suppose. We could go for a Writer's Guild, but what does that do? That costs us one gold, and we're not focusing on a cultural victory. Although maybe we should, it would be much more easier to invade other people. Um, no, it won't be as easy to invade other people because of simply our location. And there's no religious victory, so... Hmm, I don't know. Caravansary? Sure, I suppose. Once you've done that, produce uh, walls, and then after that, produce stables, I guess. How long till we research education? So that'll take 8 turns. This walls will take 6 turns, so that's... What? Six, that's 14 turns. So after that, then we could probably build a university here. And we can also do the same over in Moscow, additionally. So let's move our workers up to here, and that'll be it for this turn. Now we still have Wellington as an ally, in fact I think I did that at the beginning of the turn. Um, they, if we declare war on Sidon, they will join the war, but they probably won't move their troops, simply because, well, they, you know, AI, bad, war. Which reminds me, let me take a look at the demographics when it's my turn next. Prosthetic turn for barbarians, and it's now my turn. We are in 580 AD. So let's see, demographics. Are we lost in anything? No, actually. We're quite low on soldiers, but that's because we don't really have much need to. One important thing to point out, this isn't an accurate representation of how many soldier units we have. Like, for instance, not like in EU4 where one regiment is worth a thousand men. I don't even know what this... There's like some strange formula it goes through, but it is based off of how many soldiers you actually have. So I don't have 18,924 units, that would just be crazy. I could invade anyone with that, with any type of unit. And still succeed. We are second most populous, we have 1,292,000 people living in our empire. And the highest is 2... Yeah, 2,300,000. The worst is at 192,000, wow. Okay, might be the Zulus. I have a multiplayer game going on with um, the potatoes, which are my um, uh, Skype that I have, um, where I am basically being surrounded on all corners by <laughs> Zulus. They really hate me. They spawned right next to me, and then they decided to, you know, um, block in my city by placing other cities pretty much right next to my border, one tile away from my border. Yeah, I kind of actually went in and, well, killed him all. <laughs> uh, I probably shouldn't laugh at that, but yeah, it, it was their own fault. So, it's good to see that there are still players that are just barely entering into the medieval era. Considering we entered the medieval era like, probably several turns ago by now. But I remember the first person to enter the medieval era did it like, I don't know, within a hundred turns, I suppose. So yeah, we are on turn 140 and the year is 600 AD. May purchase with faith. What can we purchase with faith? Probably a single missionary. Do I want to... We have one follower there. Um, let's go purchase missionary. Yeah, let's purchase a missionary. Once we've done that, we can tell this missionary to go down to St. Petersburg, which will take him three turns, and then start doing stuff, I suppose. So in order, to, in order to increase the production over here, I'm going to send my workers over to here and start building a few mines. Of course, we don't really need, per se, um, uh, whatchamacallit, um, production down there because we have King Solomon's mine. But yeah, I reckon in the next episode we might... No, no we won't actually. I was about to suggest we might start building up an army to take down Sidon. There's no other way to take over city-states as Russia. I mean, you have Venice and you have Austria, which have their own unique way of taking over land from city-states. If you would probably be a bit angry with me because I'm kind of trespassing in their territory. <laughs> yeah. If he wants winnism. Interesting. Very interesting. Um, okay, guys, what do I want you to do? I can't tell you to move there, so instead walk over to here. 
<clears throat> so, my plan with the missionary that I have just purchased is to send him down to St. Petersburg. Once I've done that, I'll convert some people there, and that'll give me some extra gold because of the tithe. I think it's one, bit, um, one gold for every two or four followers. Yeah, one gold for every four followers of the religion. We have how many followers here? Eight followers up here, so that's plus two gold. If we can convert Tank Petersburg, then eventually that'll just, you know, keep piling and piling up because of the additional pressure. Um, and yeah, let's see. Ooh, yes! Great merchant! Woohoo! <laughs> ah, okay. This great merchant is going to solve any financial problems we've had, which is none. We have no financial issues whatsoever. And yet we still get a great merchant. Let me check the time on this video. This video has been going on for 26 minutes. Okay, I'll call this episode here. In the next episode, I will start doing something with Antony van Diemen, the Russian great merchant. I'm pretty sure he probably wasn't Russian. He sounds more, say, German or Polish or, like, Central European. I was about to say Central American, but that's not right. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. My name is Wynn. Well, I will see you guys next time. Take care.